मौज में है इरफान का सागर पीर करम शाह जिंदाबाद फैज मुसलसल रहमत दावर पीर करम शाह जिंदाबाद हुसन करम आई नए दिलों में Zakla, thank you very much, uh, Imam Muhammad Asim there, who was talking about the the dangers of Facebook and certain technologies. It's ironic that we call it Facebook. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not look at our faces; He does not look at our outward appearances, but He looks at other our hearts. And really, that is where the difference is. How are we deep inside? People who are people who can't keep friends when they meet them face to face, they go onto Facebook because they're covered. And that is where character comes in. You have good character; people want to be your friends. Also, don't think of a small sin that's done. in your privacy as a small sin it leads you to greater things there's a chinese proverb which i use quite often and it illustrates it very perfectly for the want of a nail the horseshoe was lost for the want of a horseshoe the steed was lost the horse the steed was lost for the loss of a, for the want of a horse the message went undelivered and for the undelivered message the war was lost so what started off with just one nail missing and the person says never mind it's only a small thing doesn't matter but the chain reaction of that was that ultimately the war was lost exactly the same thing the war that we fight with our nafs we can lose if we do not regulate our thoughts our thoughts brothers and sisters in our private time if we can control those thoughts that is when spirituality starts developing like a knife which can be extremely useful for cutting food for preparing food if it's used in the wrong way it can kill somebody like fire used in the right time in the right place it warms your house up which we could do with some heat here today it can cook your food for you but in the wrong place and the wrong time it can devastate houses and lives exactly the same way facebook is there as a tool use it wisely and be careful of its pitfalls but you know what the beautiful thing is about islam and about having a true sheikh and giving a hand in allegiance to a true sheikh that we don't need to have a facebook page with them we are linked with them through spirituality and they can see our condition wherever they are in the world there are people who deny this people who deny this but if through non muslims have reached that stage that they know what you do in your private times through technology do you think people of spirituality don't know spirituality is far more powerful and hence it is what we're here for to develop our spirituality the spiritual retreat that we come into retreat we disconnect from the dunya and we try to develop and inshallah over the next uh, day or two you will feel that spirituality uh, developing inshallah so huzur ziya al ummah rahmatullah taala alay had written the commentary of the quran called ziya al quran and they had the monthly um, magazine ziya al haram Okay, for these links with the word ziya, illumination. When Qibla Pir Sab stood up against the government of um, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, and he was imprisoned, whilst he was in Sirgoda Jail, he had a partner there. He had a companion, and his name was Gul Muhammad Fiazi, who was a journalist and who again stood up against the tyrannic rule of uh, of. Uh, um, Prime Minister uh, Bhutto. 
He was the first person to suggest this link with Ziya al Quran, Ziya al Haram, and he said, You are Ziya al Ummah. And that is where the word started. And then all the ulama of Pakistan unanimously agreed those who were, who share our school of thought, and those who do not share our school of thought. They were all united that this person is indeed the light of the nation, and hence this title was given to them. Um, uh, so to, to begin, inshallah, the next part, uh, I would like to call upon uh, Hashim Siraj Mahmood to offer and recite for us some verses of the Quran. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Idha Zulzilatil Ardu Zilzalaha Wa Akhrajatil Ardu Athqalaha وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَى لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ Jazakallah for that beautiful recitation and whoever does an act of good, an iota, an atom's worth of good, he will see it and whoever does an atom's worth of evil, he will see it. Uh, we always follow the recitation of the Quran with praises upon the Prophet wasallam. just for a br very, very brief two, two couplets. Uh, of uh, praise on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I'd like to call upon uh, Muhammad Ishtiyak. Nara takbir. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawla Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawla Din wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim Allahumma sallim Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa rik wa sallim Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Madin Allah bejta hai durud apne Habib par Allah bejta hai durud apne Habib par Rahman jo karta hai wo tum bhi kiya karo Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Na Muhammadin Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawla Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim Allahumma 
salli ala sayyidina wa maulana din ki 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 ta yaar ne ek yaar vaaste ki 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 ta yaar ne ek yaar vaaste rab meh fila sajaya ne sarkar vaaste allahumma salli ala sayyidina na muhammadin allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa maula na muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim allah hum salli ala sayyidina wa maulana muhammadin bismillah rahman rahim um just very very quickly uh we you have rocks and stones of many form uh, some which are useless some which have some benefit and some which are exceptional but it takes uh, a trained eye and knowledge to pick out the diamonds from the rocks and to pick out the pearls uh, and this is it's exactly the same in terms of the tradition and the transmission of a hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the ahadith after me after they they will be numerous with you in number so compare them to the verses of the quran and whatever coincides accept it and whatever doesn't reject it and so uh, ahadith went through uh, a, a time uh, when it had to be sifted and the best of ahadith were put together in collections and somebody went through this process and and they picked out and identified for us uh, those which were most useful those which were authenticated and they had looked through the traditions and this is exactly what we have today as a uh, a subject matter classifying diamonds traditions for sound transmission for that i would like to call upon uh, my my friend uh, my colleague and my brother hafiz atar hussain al azhari nara e takbir nara e risalat alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wal aqibatu lil muttaqin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin our spiritual guide our sheikh hazrat alama peer aminul hasan shah sahab mahboob e ziyal umma hazrat alama muhammad abdul bari sahab our teacher Hazrat Alama Ustad Asif Ali Sahib and my good friend and my colleague um, Hazrat Alama Hafiz Gul Muhammad Al Azri and to all you brothers and sisters um, my thanks and my gratitude to the organizers of this event for once again giving me an opportunity to speak on a very uh, important topic area we are short of time um, so without further delay i will go straight into the talk the topic and the title inshallah ta'ala of this talk is classifying diamonds traditions for sound transmission a, a more complicated title than it, it might actually seem in reality what i would like to share with you today inshallah ta'ala is to basically give you an outline and a brief understanding of what is a sahih hadith that sometimes a lot of the times in fact we hear from our ulama ikram we sometimes read it in the books that this particular point or this particular aqeedah has been proven or disproven by a sahih hadith what does that exactly mean we hear we sometimes hear our ulama ikram say that ahadith sahiha se sabit hai what does that exactly mean so this is the nature of today's uh, talk it's a very extensive and detailed topic area and we, we haven't got much time so we will try our best to squeeze in as much as possible <clears throat> um so to give you a brief outline of the format of the program to begin with then if we are going to talk about what is a sahih hadith then it only makes sense to firstly identify what constitutes a hadith itself um why are the hadith important what position do they hold in our religion <clears throat> then what i would like to do and this will take up the main part of the actual talk is to give you a practical example of a sahih hadith and then talk you through how that actually reached that stage 
that there were two ways I could have presented this. I could have just given you, this is a Sahih Hadith, when this condition, that condition, that condition is fulfilled. The problem with that, that it would be very theoretical and perhaps would be out of touch with a real example. So what I have done is I'm going to work backwards with you. I'm going to give you one example of a saying of our Prophet والسلام, which has reached that position of Sahih and then talk you through how it's actually reached that position. <clears throat> um, then we will be able to define what a Sahih Hadith is and then there will be some, a, a brief outline of some related matters about where we can find Sahih Hadith, the number of traditions we have from our Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And I dearly hope that we do have an opportunity at the end for some question and answers. Please be in a position where you can actually see um, the board, please. Um, because it is quite technical and you will be dependent not just on my voice, but on um, um, the presentation here as well. So please be in a position where you can actually see. And if you can't, please shuffle forward. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And to begin with then, what is a Sahih Hadith? Um, well, firstly, we have to identify what exactly a Hadith is. And then according to the scholars of Islam, what we understand is, is that ma udifa ilan nabiyya sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. A Hadith in its simplest form is something which is ascribed, something which is mansub, we say, to our beloved messenger alayhi salatu wassalam. In its detail, we find that this hadith then, and this thing which we ascribe to our prophet alayhi salatu wassalam, can take on four different forms. When we say that we can ascribe something to our prophet alayhi salatu wassalam, then there are four forms. Number one, his sayings. What we call a hadith qawli. So this is something which has omitted from the blessed mouth of our prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. Innama al-a'malu bin niyyat. Merely actions are judged according to intention. This is an example of a saying of our Prophet, and so therefore we say it is a hadith qawli. <coughs> Number two, hadith fa'li, his actions. Now, what happens here now is that the companions they are describing what the Prophet وسلم, is doing. So now it is not the actual words of our Prophet. وسلم, an example. Qara'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at-tura bil maghrib. A simple example that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions are reporting, recited Surah Tur in Maghrib prayer. This would be an example of a hadith fa'li. The third one is also considered a hadith. It's the descriptions of what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was like. And perhaps this is integral for this function and for the spiritual camp that we are here to understand what he was like. What we mean by understanding what he was like is his inner qualities and his outer qualities. So this comes under the sifa, the attributes, and sometimes we tend to call it the shamail of the Prophet ﷺ. One famous uh, work on the shamail of the Prophet ﷺ is Ash-Shamail al-Muhammadiyya by Imam Tirmazi rahmatullahi alayhi where we are told what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam physically looked like. What things did he like? What things did he dislike? As a person, what was he like to others around him? Finally, this one requires a bit more deliberation now. The silent approvals of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. This also constitutes the hadith of our Prophet. What does he mean by silent approvals? It works on a very simple idea and a very fundamental idea. And that fundamental idea is, is that whatever the companions were doing in the presence of the Prophet والسلام, he knew about it, each and every action that they were doing. Whether it was in public or in private. The Prophet والسلام, knew everything what his companions were doing. So what that meant was, is that if the companions did something which was forbidden, which was prohibited in Islam, immediately the Prophet وسلم, would outlaw and, and say that this is wrong. So on that basis then, that he would correct them if they were wrong, the flip side of that now is that when the Prophet وسلم, remained quiet, when he saw what his companions were doing, then that meant that he approved to it. That is what we call the silent approval of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An example, um, Imam uh, Abdul Hadi al-Bin Muhdi, an Al-Azri scholar, he gives an example that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his companions 
um, and there was some food on the table, on the Dastar Khan, lizard meat was bought in front of our Prophet ﷺ. He himself did not eat it, but he did not forbid it either. So on this basis now, we say that lizard meat has been proven by the hadith taqriri of the Prophet ﷺ. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he says in the lifetime of the Prophet, we used to say in front of the Prophet that the best of this ummah after its Prophet is Abu Bakr Siddiq, followed by Sayyidina Umar, followed by Sayyidina Usman. The Prophet wasallam did not tell us off, meaning that he approved of it. So this final one is also a form of a hadith. <laughs> Why are the hadith important? Well, number one, it is the second source of Sharia. You will know and appreciate that the Islam that we act upon, the salah that we go upon and all the trade and transactions and different rulings that we have, they are derived from four principal sources. First and foremost, the Quran Sharif, the unchanged and miraculous word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, the sunnah and example of our Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Thirdly, the ijma, the scholarly consensus after the lifetime of our Prophet. And then finally, qiyas, which is analogical reasoning when you deduce a new matter based upon investigations that you find from the Quran and Sunnah. So the Sunnah is example and the Ahadith are important because it forms the second source of Sharia. Secondly, the reason why the Ahadith are important, it is because we understand from the Ahadith how to exactly implement the Holy Quran. That the Quran is there, the miraculous word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as a merciful gesture, as a reflection of his compassion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also sent the perfect example to show how to act upon it as well. It is not just the case that it, the Quran fell and he just left it to us that you act upon it. Practically, what the sunnah shows is that the Quran can be implemented. And that is why the Prophet Wasallam's figure is so important in that. It is the Qur'an which tells us, read Salah. It is the Sunnah which tells you how to, what to read and when. It is the Qur'an which tells you, give Zakah. It is the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam which tells you how much you are supposed to give. Now this, this might seem quite an obvious point that you obviously need the Sunnah to understand the Qur'an. But there had been a fitna in the past, going back to the 19th century, where there were certain Muslims in, 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 in the Indian subcontinent who actually suggested that you can act upon the Qur'an and you can discard the, the, the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, what became known as the Ahli Qur'an movement. And they actually truly believe that you don't need the Sunnah of the Prophet. The Qur'an is enough for us, a truly misguided group. And it was one of the first great literary works of Huzur Ziyal Ummah Rahmatullahi Alayhi when he was a young student in Al-Azhar Sharif who wrote a very detailed book refuting those people who said that the Sunnah has no reliability and credibility in our religion. The name of this book is Sunnah Khairul An'am, a great book, a very detailed book, and it is a very good example of the academic ability of Huzur Ziyal Ummah Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Finally, 